Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about my top 10 rules for your RPG. So this list of rules is largely platform agnostic. You should be able to use this for any platform, any style of role play, whatever kind of group it is that you're setting up, these should be useful to you. So let's get into it. Rule number one, no out of character drama. Now this should not only be a rule in every role play, but it should be the first rule in your role play. We want our role play to have a lot of conflict and a lot of drama, but we don't want that drama to go into the out of character conversations and friendships that are happening in that role play. So it's really important to let your people know that are joining your role play that you feel like it's important for everyone to be getting along and having a good time. Now, of course, drama is still going to happen. It's happened in pretty much every role play group I've ever run, any role play group I've ever been in. However, we want to make sure that it's the top of our rules so that our players know that we are concerned about it and that we care and that we're going to make sure that anytime drama happens, we're going to help them handle it. Rule number two, keep in-character interactions fair. This should be your rule that talks about metagaming, power playing, god modding, things like that. These are behaviors that most other role players will consider unfair. So we want to make sure that we specifically state in our role play that we don't allow those sorts of things. Because of the freedom that text-based role play offers, people can sometimes go a little bit overboard and do things that other players find as unfair to their character or unfair to the role play itself. So we want to make sure that we don't allow that in our rules. Now, when it comes to these sorts of behaviors, if you're unfamiliar with any of those terms, let me know in the comments down below. I can make a whole video about problematic behaviors when it comes to role play, and we can talk about some of those different terms and what they mean. Rule number three, activity requirements. So activity requirements are going to vary based on the type of role play that you're doing and the pace that you want to set, but we should always define them in the rules so that players know what's expected of them. In my role plays, I tend to do a seven day activity requirement and I do it based on Muse, not Mun. So the reason that I run my activity this way is because we want to make sure that people aren't playing maybe one character in favor of another character. And it helps make sure that people are spreading their time more evenly amongst all of their characters as opposed to favoring a certain one. Rule number four, hiatus requirements. So we should also define in our rules what our hiatus requirements are, just like we're defining what our activity requirements are. So how long is it that you allow people to take a hiatus? In my role plays, I allow up to a month and it depends on the circumstances. So if you're asking for a whole month, then there should be extenuating circumstances that I know about. Also, do you allow people who are on activity check to request a hiatus? Is this something that you're going to let people do as opposed to saying if you're on activity check, you need to go post to make sure that you stay in the role play? I also add to mind that hiatuses are granted based on mods discretion. The reason why I do this is because I've encountered in almost every RP at least once someone asking for a hiatus that really has lost interest in the role play. And what I will do for that person is say, hey, we're not going to grant you a hiatus. However, when you're ready to join the role play again, just reach out to me and let me know. You don't need to fill out a whole new application. It's totally fine. You can just rejoin when you're ready. And that way they feel like they can go and take care of whatever it is they need to take care of without losing everything in the role play. Because a lot of times what happens when these people lose interest in the role play, they're conflicted between knowing they don't want to role play anymore, but also thinking about all of the work and time that they've put into their character and they've put into their story and they don't want to lose that. So giving people a little bit of flexibility to rejoin is the way that I handle that as opposed to letting people go on indefinite hiatuses or hiatuses that they don't really need. Rule number five, no bubble role playing. So what is bubble role playing? It's essentially role playing with just one person or a small group of people in a role play instead of kind of spreading the love to everyone. Now, when I say no bubble role playing, I don't mean that you have to interact with everyone or that you have to interact with every single character in the role play. Essentially, what I have this rule for is if I notice people doing something like only replying to their shipping partner and not replying to their other threads, then I can talk to them about bubble role playing. Because if you're doing something like that, then really, what are you in a whole role play group for? Why not just do that one on one? Rule number six, not safe for work content. So your rules should also detail if you allow not safe for work content and at what threshold. So do you have your role play set up so that only 18 plus players can join? 
Do you maybe have some other sort of age restriction? Whatever it is for your role play that needs to be detailed. Players should know when they join what sort of not safe for work content or what sort of triggering content they might encounter so that they can be ready for that in your role play. Rule number seven, acceptances. So your rules should also detail what your acceptance process is like. So that might be a full application. That might be just that you need to introduce yourself and your character. But whatever it is, your rules need to explain what that process is like and how quickly that once people join the server, they're able to start role playing. Rule number eight, your character's appearance. So different role plays handle your character's looks differently. It might be a role play where you just describe appearance with text. It might be a role play where a lot of the people draw their character, or you might use what's called face claims or play buys. Whatever method you use, it should be detailed in your rules what people can expect as far as character's physical description goes. So I use face claims in my role play, for example, and I have a rule to not have deceased face claims in the role play. And that's my personal preference, and that's what I have set up, and that's detailed in my rules. So whatever method you're using, it should be covered in the rules of your role play. Do you guys use face claims or play buys? If you do and you'd like a video all about those and, and what those are and how to effectively use them, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Number nine, character number. So what I mean by this is how many characters does your role play allow? Do you only allow one character per person? Do you only allow a certain number of characters per people? Or is it unlimited? And exactly what threshold is it that people can apply for additional characters? This should all be detailed in your rules, no matter what exactly it is that you allow for your role play. And last but not least, rule number 10. What is your warning system? So in your rules, you should define what happens when you break a rule. Are there rules that once you break them, it's just that's it and you're out? Are there certain rules that are different or is it all sort of one thing? So the way I do my role plays is with a three strike system. So generally for most rules, you'll get a warning. And then if you keep doing the same behavior over and over, you'll get strikes. And once you have three strikes, then you're removed from the role play. There are definitely things, though, where when they happen, I'll immediately remove people. So usually that's related to drama causing and behaviors like that. If I see someone that's just really creating a toxic environment in the role play, then there's no warnings or strikes. You're just removed. Whatever it is that you use for your role play, that should be detailed in your rules so that people know what they're getting into when it comes to people that break rules or if they break the rules. So those are my top 10 rules for RPGs. Uh, what rules do you use? Do you use basically my same list? Do you have additional things that you add in? Are there rules that I talked about that you don't include? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm really curious what rules you use standardly in your role plays. So remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all of the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo, and thank you so much for watching. Make it a great day.